Disney has announced that Sister Act 3 will be coming to theatres almost 30 years after Whoopi Goldberg starred in the original. There's also been talks of remaking the 1980, the 1980s classic film Three Men and a Baby and they're looking at Zac Efron to play one of the roles as well. Do you think that the remakes can be better than the originals and that the sequels can be better than the first films and when people make these remakes do you think they're trying to tap into a new audience or they're trying to keep the love of the old audience that they once had? I love films, guys, so I'm going to take this one. And I think that, I just honestly, I do. I love films, all of them. I think that it's very difficult for sequels to be better than the originals. It does happen um, on off chances like The Godfather 2. Um, Thor Ragnarok wasn't specifically a sequel. It was like a, the threequel. Third, that was probably yeah. the, yeah, that was the that best was probably Thor. the best one out By of far. all of them. Yeah, mm. really, really good. Um, also, The Dark Knight Rises was better than um, The Dark Knight. So there are one... No, The Dark Knight, sorry, was better than Batman... Was it Batman Begins? I think it was called Batman Begins. I think anyway, it was, the Chris, yeah. The Christian Bell ones, the second one was much better. It will stand out to be honest, the best one in the series. So it can happen, but I think it happens very rarely. And in terms of films that are better than their originals, I think those are even fewer <laughs> than sequels that are better. I would say The Nutty Professor, I think that was a better than the original. If you if you didn't know already that that was a remake, the one with Eddie Murphy. Um, also The Parent know. Trap. Yeah, The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan, that was good. I could possibly say... Jumanji, the the rocks one. I would, but I don't know where to place that one. I don't know if I would call that a remake or like a sequel. I'm not really sure. And I was very nervous when it came out, but it was actually very good. And even the sequel to his one was actually good as well. So he's on a the roll there. In terms of different audiences, I definitely think they're trying to tap into different audiences because there's more money there. There's a generation that hasn't seen that film already and that you can get involved with it. But the older generation who originally saw it are also going to have an interest because it's linked to their youth or their growing up experience and three men and a baby is actually a remake i didn't even know that so it's a it was already a remake in the 80s and now they're remaking it but have you ladies even seen three men and a baby that's of course awesome. we haven't sophie As <laughs> I, I, knew it. Oh, I knew it i knew it you know what i thought i, when I, I knew who it was i knew should i go and watch this film because i know she's gonna ask me <laughs> this remake. i, I, I have not seen i even heard of it before <laughs> Neither it's a good Neither. film. It's a, it's, a, it's a comedy. It's about three men. It's about a woman who kind of lives with three men very close to them. She gets pregnant. She doesn't know who the father is. And like all of them raise the baby together and then they end up in these funny scenarios. So it's a nice little comedy. So, but I just feel like it loses its magic when you're constantly having to remake things. Yeah, I definitely agree with you about um, what you said about reintroducing the story to a younger generation because I think it's like a lot of the stories that are being reintroduced are almost like legacy stories like I knew I like Lion King was one of my favorite movies when I was a child so when my little mm -hmm. brother was growing up I was like oh let's put on Lion King because it was like me just representing what meant so much to me and I think Disney's definitely tapping in with that like we've seen them now make the live reaction of um, Lion King, Aladdin, Milan so I think we're seeing them bring back their legacy stories. I mean, Cinderella's been done a hundred times, you know what I mean? So it's like one of those things where they've found something that works and they they, they want to do it again. Do I think that sequels and threequels, I think it once again depends on the movie um, because I know you were for Jumanji, Sophie, but I was not. So that's why I was kind oh, of like, okay. <laughs> I liked, I liked The Rock and Kevin Hart's and Jack Black's version. Like I, I did, but it wasn't Robin Williams Jumanji for me. And not that it was meant to, but it just didn't have the same effect. I think they're two I different think you like, stylings. They're two completely different yes, films, yes. yeah, for yeah, real. Exactly, because like the rock one was more comedy and I felt like um, Robin Williams was a little bit more mystique. and that. So I think it was two different vibes. Um, but then when I, I started to really think hard about what sequel or threequel movies do I prefer over the original? And I really had to sit and really stew on this and think, I cannot think of it. Then the first thing that popped in my mind was Rio 2, which is like an animation. I really Great enjoyed. Great film. I loved Rio 2 versus Rio. So I was like, yeah, okay. They go to the Amazon jungle. I'm here for it. Okay, okay. I loved the continuing Toy Stories. Um, so that that was always like a good a good vibe for me. Uh, then I thought, did I like The Incredibles? I wasn't sure. And then I thought about the remakes. 
obviously there's been a hundred Spider-Mans, but I really liked um, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And so I was like, you know what? Yeah, I do. And so um, I don't think sequels and threequels can always work. And I think sometimes that has to do with either the writing, because sometimes they bring the story to a place where it didn't even need to go. And so we as the viewer are just kind of like, why, why are we even here? And secondly, sometimes the budget the budget isn't as good as the first movie. So you can't even appreciate if it's a good story. You know what's so funny, Anissa, when you were talking about Jumanji and you were like, The Rock and Jack Black and Kevin Hart, I was about to be like, you better put some respect on her name. And then I couldn't remember her name, but I think it's Catherine Gillian. I can't remember her name. Is it? I think it's Catherine Gillian. I quite, I really like her as an actress. And I was, I was really, I literally found her. I was about, um, she was the Doctor Who's assistant and she was also the, um, the sis, the blue sister in the Avengers films. She was in that film of Emma Watson called The Circle. Oh, Nebula. Nebula, that's her name, yeah. She's Nebula. Oh, but Nebula's always in the makeup, so I wouldn't have recognised her. But did you not see her when she was the Doctor Who's assistant? I've never watched Doctor Who. Don't watch Doctor Who. Fair enough then. Fair. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because that was her big breakthrough role. Doesn't matter. Um, (laughs) um, Oh man, I I was so focused on the Catherine thing and I really (laughs) hope that's her name and I completely forgot everything else I was going to say. But I think in terms in terms of remakes i don't want to see a remake if i can remember the original so with sister act obviously it's not a remake it's the third film but i didn't know that these films were older than i am i genuinely grew up watching them so i didn't know that they they were they were made in 1992 and 1996 what they're my films though but they're from my childhood so how I just feel like Luanda that is like the height I, I, I would say it's a nice I know how Luanda did not know I this I feel like that's the height of like the current generation a film existed before me what R- for real because I, my whole thing is it's like if I can remember it then it doesn't need to be remade with something like Three Men and a Baby I don't remember that movie you can remake it if you want but I feel like we need to wait at least 50 years before we remake a film because we watch it 50 no, years come on yes Five zero is nothing extreme nothing would ever get made if it, we had to wait 50 years but for it think to be about made. how many Les Mises we have how many Snow Whites we have how many Cinderella's they date back you know what I mean I just don't need it again and again and again when actually there are so many intelligent creatives that have so many innovative ideas that we can be putting the money to make those stories instead of remaking the ones that have already happened and I do think it is like um just kind of like a surefire way of getting an audience because they know oh if I you know Lion King was a hit so let's make Lion King again because obviously the kids are going to love it because the kids loved it all those decades ago and they continue to love it like Anissa said like I showed it to my brother and we do this and we watch it as a family they're going to love it again and we're just going to remake it we've got the budget Disney's a big deal we're going to cast Beyonce and Childish Gambino let's go um but in- <laughs> interestingly enough I think that um I do think that they they're pandering to new audiences because every time they make a remake they kind of retract the problematic messaging in the in the original films because they know that the new audiences probably will pick up on it or that the old audiences have grown up and they're still going to watch the remake and they don't want to see it again so for example because I just talked about Lion King obviously all that we see throughout um you know the media especially the media a couple of years ago with villains the villains are always people of color and I know this is a cartoon but it still works with the lions the evil lion was like brown a brown dark skinned lion and then the good lion was like a light golden lion and so for me I wouldn't have watched the new film if they kept that but they didn't what they did in the new Lion King was they kept everyone the same color they just made the evil lion matted and a little bit gray instead of making him visibly darker Darker. than the hero um so I appreciate that oh one last thing also with Aladdin because this is what I mean by they retract the problematic um aspects of the originals they actually gave princess princess jasmine some lines and a song and i was here for it (laughs) instead of being just a beautiful 16 year old to marry like a pauper like she had a song and it was it was called something like speechless or speaking out or they were they were very conscious of the fact that we're trying to give her a moment where she has her voice and i liked that 
Well, I yeah. think I think that's um, something really interesting you're saying in the idea that some films, I think it's necessary for them to be remade for a new generation. And I think there are certain films that we've seen that we're so, A Star Is Born. I think the one with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga was like the third time maybe it had been remade. Third? I thought it was second. No, I no, thought this no. was the like, first time. No, there was. <laughs> I still there didn't was, watch it. Was Barbara it. Streisand? <laughs> I didn't watch yeah, any of them. Yeah, Barbara Streisand, but she wasn't the one that made it famous. The one before it, I think it was Judy Garland. That was the one that no. was actually the big one. The Barbara Streisand one didn't actually do that well. The, I think it was the Judy Garland one, and then Judy. there was one before that. So this was like the third or fourth time it had been remade. But if you weren't of those generations, you don't remember. And I know you say fifty years, but every generation is like ten years. So I don't. Need I know it. a friend. I, had, I knew a friend and he said to his kid, you got to watch The Matrix because it was, and he was just like, that old film, like wasn't that made in the 90s? So generations aren't usually ones to kind of really go back and watch all these old films unless they have a real interest there. So I think they are tapping into a market. But I think something that you said that I really wanted to pick up on um, Luanda was that it is frustrating because there are so many new stories out there, but production companies want something that's bankable because they're like, yeah. People are going to turn up to Mulan, one, because they want to take their children to something, and two, because there's people in their 30s up and downwards for a few years who will remember the original and go and see it. So I think mm. they're trying to make money. And I think it does take something away from the film industry because I, I feel like remakes, sometimes when they make a remake, sometimes you're just like, if the film was really good, you're just like, it didn't need to be remade. You can literally show it to a child the way that it is and it will be fine. Mm. The only thing I'll have to say on that is as somebody um, who cannot watch slightly older films. Um, so my manager tried to tell me to watch Dirty Dancing and I could not because the picture is too old for me. I like, uh, like Elisa, the, new, Elisa, the new visuals. Elisa, I'm I so can't. sorry. I can't, I, can't, I, can't. I can't do it. I cannot do it. And I have tried. I can't. I need, Elisa, I need the greatness. Like, it's not for me. I Elisa, can't the do majority, it. I <laughs> the majority of the best films have not been made probably in our lifetime. So where does that leave you? That's fine. That's absolutely fine with me. I've I lived this that. life so far happy, so it makes no difference. Oh my uh, God. But for I me, every my... time we talk about films, I just <laughs> You're going to get mad. No, I, sad. Okay, well, you, might agree, sad. you might agree with West what I'm going to say sad. next. You <laughs> might agree with what I'm going to say next. I One issue that I have, though, with the film industry, and sometimes when they make sequels or threequels, is the gap between the movies. And I think the longer the gap shows you how not necessary it was sometimes. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is... I really liked the number one and number two of Bridget Jones. And I, I loved it. I'm a Bridget Jones fan. Like, I bloody loved it. Do you know what I mean? When number three was coming, I was thinking, we're having a, a third. It was like a good like 10 years afterwards. I was thinking, I don't know. What, is Bridget still going to be a mess this many years later? And then when she came, everybody was significantly older. And it was a lot for me to get my head around. I could not watch the story because I was just looking at how much everyone had aged. And not because they had aged badly, but it was because I could not separate that you left me in number two. She's just fresh off Thailand. She has a nice tan. Everything is fine. You know, Mark Darcy, la, 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 la. She's now 10, 11 years older. No man, nothing's going on with her. She's still a mess and she's aged. It was just, it was too much for me to, to deal with. And so even now that I'm thinking like Sister Act, it's, it's been a while since 1996. Do I really need the third Sister Act? I don't like this long period of time. It tells me I don't need it. And if you're bringing it back, it could be just for bank. That's just my personal opinion. I can't. <laughs> you know what? I, I think that's really, oh, I was just, oh, let me speak on that. Real. I think that's really interesting because I don't know if I always do agree with that but I can understand what you're saying because yeah. I thought Bridget Jones diary number two was pants honestly I thought it was rubbish really? no, yeah yeah I did I thought it was awful I, like with bad sequels I pretend like they don't exist because it taints it taints the memory of the first so like sex in the city two I'm like I'm gonna just pretend that didn't exist because it was there was just no point to that film but I think with Bridget Jones it was nice to see the characters had moved on and that they weren't in the same place so her friend who they'll be getting drunk with they're like I can't do that anymore because I've got kids I've got a business and even for Bridget she wasn't as much of a mess as she was before she's held on to her job she progressed so I really like the idea of moving the character on in time if it's done well but I think it can be rarely done that good 
So I just wanted to say in terms of me struggling with old films, it's not the same reason as Anissa, because Anissa <laughs> said, like, the quality, she just can't do it. I can't. <laughs> I shot an iPhone, she can't do it. Um, <laughs> but I think for me, like, genuinely, the issues that I find, like what I said earlier about how when they remake films, they kind of retract some of the problematic elements. It really frustrates me um, watching films with the eyeballs that I have now and the mind that I have now and picking up on all these elements and I just spend my time being frustrated for an hour and a half instead of enjoying a movie. When you have the classic films that you watch as a kid, you don't actually notice most of the things that are wrong with it until you get older. But now that I'm older, watching the films, watching the old films, I'm just picking up on racism and sexism and it's really frustrating. Like I watched a documentary on um, Hollywood films and then I end up watching a movie because I was like, wow, that's so interesting. Let me watch this film. And it was a black and white film and it was a really good film and then at the end of the movie the, the protagonist is in blackface and I was like I just I just didn't need that today I just didn't need it but but what you said Anissa about um films being remade so long after from an actor's perspective I actually think that can be a really good thing for people because they're remaking Shark Boy and Lava Girl did you know about that film did you know? Yeah, do you remember it? That. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I watched Shark Boy and Lava Girl as a child. They're remaking the film. No, they're doing a sequel to the original film. How like twenty years later with the same um, woman who was the girl in the original. Taylor Lautner has not taken up his role of Shark Boy, but whatever. But I think because we know who Taylor Lautner is, like Taylor Lautner. You know, he had a big career. He had a life changing role in Twilight and he's gone on to do other movies and things like that. For the other girl, if you've had a gap in your career and you're in a position where you can be re-entered into the entertainment industry for a role that you had when you were 10, I think that's a brilliant opportunity. Sometimes that can that can then offset the career that you were trying to have all of these years in between. So I'm not like completely mad when they wait a really long time because I just think sometimes it offers someone an opportunity that they may not have had otherwise. I'll give you that. I do agree. It's like how they're bringing the Proud family back on Disney Plus and it's giving a lot of the old cast um, their jobs back. So I 100% agree. They're bringing that. it back? Like, yeah. New I, episodes you, and stuff? Yeah, brand new episodes. And Kiki Palmer has signed on as a brand new character Maybe. as well. So they're giving it a lot of eggs. So yeah. So they need to cool. retract some of their problematic colorism as well, but we'll talk about that in another episode. <laughs> you know, I think it's. I think that's a really <laughs> tough point because I think I agree with you Like I've watched things and in the past I think the lines around consent are so damn blurry it's un believable i don't i don't want you blah, blah blah next thing you know he's on top of her on the bed i'm like this is just yeah and it's supposed to be basically. a romantic scene and it's yeah, romantic it's, and i'm like it's, it's basically it's sort of, <laughs> but i think a lot of the time we have to really suspend that part of our brain in order to kind of take the good from it because i've tried to look at them more like on the comment in society because i think definitely in the entertainment industry especially in film you can see what was accepted at the time or what oh, yeah. people thought was the norm or should be accepted and because otherwise we're going to just throw at some real classics out there mm, okay opinion. but the thing is that what i have learned is that because we always have this mindset of like oh but then they fought this and blah 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 and whilst it's true what i have learned is that there are people who think the way that we think now all the way through society so some of the ideas that we have that we think are original and they're so modern and they're so innovative they've actually been people who have been thinking them for hundreds of years they just they just haven't been at the forefront of society so we can learn about the way that that things were for the for the most part but i just don't think we need to consume i guess it's a personal choice if you want to consume media that makes you uncomfortable then